once again to our morning devotions, Experiencing God Through the Seasons of Life. The title of our devotion this morning is God's Timing, and our reading is going to come from the book of Second Samuel chapter 9, verses 3 to 7. I will read in your hearing. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Micaiah, the son of Amiel in Lodibar. Then king David said, sent and fetched him out of the house of Micaiah, the son of Amiel from Lodibar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come out to David, he fell on his face and he did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. The story of uh, Mephibosheth is now taking a new twist, and we see what the Lord's timing does. For when God's timing is calm, no one can stop it. Even the statement that Ziba said about Mephibosheth's lameness did not deter David because God works in his own time and his power flows in the stream of his timing. And everything, everything under the sun is uh, subject to change, subject to seasons. And now we had seen Mephibosheth who had been in the palace going to the pit. But now he was coming from the pit back to the palace. This was time for restoration. And no one would have thought, no one would have suspected. But if we listen carefully to the words of David, is there anyone that I can show the kindness of God, which means God is in control of the seasons here. It is God who is shifting things in favor of Mephibosheth. Difficult as his name was, but his situation was about to change for the better. Remember, earlier on, we said life is filled with swift transitions. Overnight, you know, a very thin line, seconds separate disaster from uh, good things. Even when life is shifting from bad to good, it's only separated by seconds. And the life of Mephibosheth was shifting in a way that is unimaginable. No one could stop it. No one could, uh, you know, you cannot stop a change whose time has come. You cannot stop God from doing his thing. Everything that God assigned for us, everything that God designed, even for the orphans amongst us, even if bad things have been happening, one thing after another. But when God says now, your now time is coming and you need to walk and march every day, knowing that when your time comes, no one can stop it. No one can stop God from performing that which he promised, that he will make things right for us. And surely there are so many testimonies that we know of people whose situations seemed hopeless, whose situations seemed like it was finished, whose stories were like Zebas, like uh, Mephibosheth's story, whereby he was now in Lodiba, a God for second place. I, I want to always try to imagine what it was like to see the chariots of the king coming to Lodiba. And from the way that Mephibosheth responds, it shows us that maybe Mephibosheth th thought the king had looked for him so that he could kill him. That's why the king said, no, 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 fear not, fear not. <laughs> we, I'm going to, he, the king was going to make things so right for Mephibosheth. He, he's, he promised that you are going to sit on my table and on my table, you are going to eat continually. If we read the story very well, you should read the story for yourselves. It says um, David restored everything that belonged to Saul. Even servants, he assigned servants, people to go and uh, plow for Mephibosheth, to provide food for the sake of Mephibosheth. But because Mephibosheth's time had come for restoration, he was on the king's table. And on the king's table, the feet were not an issue because his feet were under the table. And from the top going up, he was just like anyone else. And when God's time has come, 
it comes with the restoration it comes with all the beautiful things it comes with extras and you, you, god makes us forget where what the locusts have eaten in our lives god has a way of restoring us to our former glory how i don't know he has a thousand ways of delivering each and every one of us out of our situations i love it even when the lord says when the time was come even jesus was born Everything that belongs to God happens in its time and God has a way of making things beautiful for each and every one, one of us. Weeping may endure for a season, but joy will come in the morning. That's the God that we serve. And I pray uh, this morning that whatever you are going through, may you know that God's timing is when he says now. You're now, we don't know when it's coming, but just live believing that he is doing something for you and it is, it is going to be well. May the Lord bless you.